So this project requires a little bit of explanation. About a year ago, getting ready to deploy, jumping around on Craigslist, stumble across 1985 FL350 rolling chassis. Basically just the wheels, the frame, and that's it. No engine, no roll cage, just the chassis. So we found an FL350 Honda Odyssey rolling chassis on Craigslist, and I couldn't resist. Now we're gonna strap it to a truck and drag it around the field. This is gonna work well. I feel good about this. It's a great idea all around. It's it really not, not a flaw in it. No. We really thought it out. Might have the best ride of all of us. Why is he putting his feet like that? I'm scared. <laughs> Hit it. Oh, he's gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. She rides great. Just need to drive under its own power and stop. We'll be ready. Your turn. If you know anything about them, awesome little dune buggies that Honda made in the 80s. And it's super expensive to actually like restore them because the parts are so hard to come by, they didn't make too many of them. So we went out and decided we'd resto mod this one. Decided to get a Rotax engine out of a snowmobile because they're plentiful, parts are plentiful and they're reliable and put it together. Well, it's been about a year in progress. I, d I said I wouldn't buy it because I didn't have time to mess with it unless Sam and Robert had time to mess with it. So I bought it. They said they'd mess with it while I was gone. They picked up an engine, bolted it in, got it running, and uh, this is where we're at. Not a finished project yet, but engine runs, goes like gangbusters, no brakes, needs some finishing touches, Suspension needs a little work. Suspension wasn't that great when it was new, but yeah, here's a few clips of when we're putting it together. All right, Eric, this is for you. I've got a uh, 1979 Ski-Doo Everest 500 electric start. It's got a 500cc Rotax engine in it. It runs pretty decent for its year. It's a little bit roughed up on the outside, but that's okay because uh, all I need is the engine. There's our 500cc Rotax engine. It's got the uh, CVT transmission in it. We'll use the driver pulley and uh, uh, we'll use the driven pulley off the Honda Odyssey. It's got a massive exhaust that ain't gonna fit real well on the uh, FL350, but we're gonna figure it out anyway. Um, it's got a mechanical cooling fan on it. Uh, I believe it's a Makuni uh, carburetor on it. It's two cylinder. These two cylinders will barely fit into the uh, the Honda Odyssey. Putting a three cylinder in there is a, a real mess.
things on our last run. Engine still works good. I'm going to start removing this uh, 500 cc Rotax out of this snowmobile for our Odyssey. minutes there's only you know a dozen bolts or so that hold it in and uh, two or three wires a few fuel lines and a few other miscellaneous bits and she came right out um, I'm gonna show you how to fit this in the Honda Odyssey uh, now depending on what kind of snowmobile motor you use um, things are gonna be a little bit different but there's a lot of commonalities um, the exhaust is way too big to fit um, behind the seat of a Honda Odyssey, so that'll have to be modified. Um, lining up the pulley um, uh, is a little bit different with this twin cylinder, uh, which is different from the Honda Odyssey, which came was, which was a single cylinder. The frame will have to be modified. Motor mounts will have to be added. Um, getting the carburetor to fit in there uh, can be a little bit tricky as well. To fit the snowmobile motor into the Honda Odyssey, um, because I've measured it and kind of set it in there before, um, I know that I'm going to have to remove uh, some of the uh, structure here. Um, the original motor mounts are going to have to be removed, and uh, I know that I'm going to have to either cut out this tube or to notch it, and uh, I think I'm going to opt for notching it. I'm going to cut about halfway through the tube on both sides uh, to give me a little bit more room to put that engine in it and also to be able to adjust it side to side. Um, this is a very tight space for the, the, uh, the Rotax motor. Um, I want it as low as I can get it uh, to make the, the buggy handle a little bit better to uh, keep its center of gravity um, as low as possible. And so uh, uh, it's going to take some finagling. I'm going to have to remove a few things, but I know up front before I even uh, try to get it in there that uh, I'm going to have to clearance some of this tube. So I'm going to get after that. We will try to keep the controls on the uh, steering wheel. The brakes are both locked up. The uh, throttle is missing. I guess we're gonna have to find that piece. I didn't realize that was gone. Um, we will wire in lights to the, uh, the light switch and we will wire in the, uh, the kill switch to the, the, in the factory location. At least that's the plan. brackets cut and I also removed the seat I needed to remove it to make way for the uh, exhaust and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to set the engine in there I got a piece of wood in here to kind of offset it up from the, the frame a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and set it in there and see how it fits and and uh, also be able to show you uh, exactly uh, uh, where the clearance issues with this engine come into play That's pretty close to where I want her. All right, let me show you what I've got for um, mounts going on right here. I've welded this piece of angle iron in here 
and uh, it is slotted uh, an inch left and right. So it's got about two inches of movement left and right that I'll be able to slide the engine. I also got the uh, third back mount here and I will have a rubber uh, uh, bushing on top of that uh, at uh, a later time, but it also has uh, about two inches of play left and right. And so the whole motor is gonna be able to slide. The motor is bolted to a, uh, this aluminum mounting plate and it goes on here like this, all nice and fancy like. And if you've noticed, I took, uh, took it off and I slotted the holes. And so it has about an inch of movement forward and backwards. And that'll help me dial in the, uh, the uh, um, CVT, uh, the belt. And also, um, if we modify this, where we put a spacer in there to widen it to make the uh, wider belt fit, we can slide the engine forward a little bit to uh, compensate for that. But I'm gonna go ahead and grab the engine and uh, stick it on there and uh, see how it looks in there. Don't be like me, get friends to help you. Uh, that's on my shirt. engine fits in there like so. Here's the carburetor. And it'll fit in there. Just like that. This will have to be cut out for the air filter. I might have to get an air filter with an elbow that goes up there. The exhaust is still going to need cut, but uh, it fits in there real good. Very low. Um, it's only sitting you know, a few inches over the bottom of the, uh, the Odyssey. You can see where I've clearanced the frame right here. It's very tight. And then on the other side, I have a little bit more room, but not a whole lot. Um, you know, I've probably only got an inch to play with left and right, even though I have uh, two inches of adjustment on my mounts. This is the angle iron mount that I made and you can see part of the slot right here that the engine can slide side to side. This is the exhaust that's going to be hitting me in the back with the head and I can go ahead and put that on. The exhaust will have to be routed a lot tighter to the engine to fit the seat. But it's going to go up over the pulley and uh, be routed out the back. Um, this exhaust has two layers. Um, it has some kind of preheating system, I guess, for the head. It's got a little tube that goes back towards the head. And so uh, I'll be able to cut off the outer layer on this, and it'll be a little bit narrower, but not a whole lot. But it'll fit in there pretty good once I get it welded up. cut out about an inch um, of the exhaust right here. And the only reason I cut out an inch there was uh, because there was an ugly cut on it from where I'd cut some other pieces off the exhaust. So I just cut out that piece all together and I rotated this around um, about 90 degrees and welded it back together. And she fits in there pretty good. Um, the seat will ride up about right here. It should clear the seat just fine and uh, I'm going to weld in a uh, exhaust hanger back here that's going to have a rubber mount on it and uh, that'll keep this thing from vibrating. Um, it's also going to be able to slide on that rubber mount um, forwards and backwards with the engine. The engine is, uh, is able to slide forward and back uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, an inch to two inches and so that'll help me adjust the belt length and the exhaust will be able to uh, to uh, uh, move with that. Uh, the only thing that's gonna hold on the exhaust is it's gonna have these springs uh, on this coupler and that exhaust hanger and it should float pretty well right there and shouldn't rattle around and make a whole lot of noise. All right, I got the engine set in there pretty close to where I want it. You can see where I clearanced the, uh, the frame 
make uh, more room for the the driven pulley there and it's pretty close to lined up with the uh, or with the driven pulley here um, we're going to use the the factory um, driven pulley off the Honda Odyssey um, it will be uh, likely modified in the future to make it uh, fit a wider belt a little bit better but it will function with the wider belt um, as is the uh, this is one of the clearance issues that we run into with these motors the uh, the carburetor sits really low on them and uh, it ends up hitting the gearbox and this bracket up here and so the carburetor will barely wedge in there and then there has to be an air filter on the side of it and the way that I'm gonna uh, get around that is I will end up tipping the entire engine forward just a few degrees um, and cutting off some of this bracket right here so it'll fit um, on this side you can see how close um, the engine gets to the frame rail and why I uh, uh, clearance the frame the way I did